Hey everyone, thank you for tuning into my TIG welding how-to series, TIG welding for beginners. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to put your TIG welding torch together like a pro. All right, first I'll show you guys a typical setup that I will run here for TIG. This is a Miller W280 torch. Uh, these types of torches are pretty common with most inverter type machines now. Um, I am using a Lincoln machine, but Miller works just as well with it. Uh, these guys are great, they're lightweight, got the flexi head on it, which is kind of nice getting around tricky corners and stuff like that. So I love these torches. They're lightweight, they're easy to use, and the hardware is pretty interchangeable between most stuff you'll buy. So I'm running, I usually run one of either of these sets for AC aluminum welding. This one's the more typical uh, set that I will run. Uh, it basically has an inner collet sleeve. I prefer the wedge collet type. Let's see how there's a wedge there. The other type of inner collets you can run inside are these guys. I think they're called the split wedge collets. You can see there's a split here instead of the wedge style that these guys use. What will typically happen with these guys though is unfortunately over time, the heat from your torch causes these to warp really easily. So if you can, I would definitely prefer to choose the wedge collet type. So as well as the inner collet sleeve, we run the outer collet body. That guy goes in there. And then I will typically run somewhere between a five to a number seven cup. The other type of uh, setup I'll run for AC will be the wedge call it again on the inside, a gas diffuser. I prefer these gas diffusers for a lot of outside corner to corner stuff. Uh, you get better coverage with your gas and it makes the weld typically a lot shinier. On top of that, I'll run a number seven cup um, and it's uh, a wider cup, obviously, because it has to fit over that bad boy there. So, the last thing you need in the equation here is your tungsten electrodes. Honestly, for everything I do in this shop, I usually use one eighth setup. I taper my tungstens quite long like this. Uh, reason being is that if I want to put a really small ball on the end of it, I can still do really thin stuff without having to switch to a 332 setup or a 16th, etc. I can run an eighth for everything. I never have to change gear. Uh, it's real simple. And if I ever wanna rip it up to like 230 or 240, higher amperage, again, I just put a bigger ball on this. I don't have to change any of my gear. Okay, so let's put the torch together. I'll show you how. First thing I'll usually do is put the inner collet sleeve into the collet body like this. And what I try and do usually is I always back this guy out. Some guys use a longer uh, holder for their electrodes. Some people use short little ones. I just have a medium sized guy here. You wanna make sure this is backed out all the way. I'll show you why. Sometimes what can happen is people will thread this in and if your holder is wound all the way in or quite a ways in, what'll happen is you'll go to wind this guy in and it will feel tight. What is actually happening is this guy is not seating properly because it's not winding all the way into the socket. So what happens is if you start welding, you'll have your cup done up nice and tight. And what'll happen is this guy will back off slightly and you'll have a gas leak out of both sides right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this guy is wound all the way out, this guy's tight while this is still loose. If this guy's still loose and this is tight, then that means you have a proper gas seal there. Using your MIG pliers or your welding pliers, just to squeak, just a little bit more than finger tight, that's all. Those are copper threads in there, they're really easy to strip if they get too hot. So you just wanna give it a little squeak, don't smash it. All right, cup, pretty simple, pretty tight. And then what I'll usually do is kind of approximately pick my stick out distance. A good rule of thumb with stick out distance, especially when you're first starting to learn how to do TIG, don't go any further out than the width of your cup. For example, this cup width measures to be about a half of an inch. So general rule of thumb, you don't want your tungsten to stick out any more than a half an inch for sure when you're first learning. Reason being is the further out your tungsten is when you're first learning, 
the more prone you are to dipping, the more prone it is to getting contaminated. So it might help you out a little bit to have it tucked in a little further than you probably would when you get comfortable. All right, now that we got our torch set up, I want you guys to check the next video on how to do a lap joint TIG weld. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your tungsten by balling it for the joint properly. And the lap weld is probably the perfect weld to start with simply because I think it's the easiest. Obviously a lot of people will tell you different things. That's just what I find. So check out the next video in this playlist on how to do a lap weld. It'll come out in a couple days. And hit me up on Instagram. It's at Pacific Arc TIG Welding. Send me any questions, uh, leave questions and comments uh, below and I'll check it out. I really appreciate you guys watching this. Have a good one, thank you.